So you've been taught that Abraham somehow committed sin or he stepped outside of the will of God because he took on an additional wife. Well, in this particular episode of the series that we've been on about the life of Abraham and his practice of polygamy and whether it's sin or not, we're going to peel a little bit further, dig a little bit deeper, and we're going to go into um, how God even commanded polygamy in Abraham's situation when we come back on the other side. Don't forget to like this video if you like it, click subscribe, click notifications for future contents, and don't forget to share it with a friend. Where preachers get this wrong, again, although it appeared that Abraham uh, made the wrong choice in taking on Hagar as an additional wife, God nevertheless said otherwise when we read chapter 16 on further. So preachers claim that Abraham was lusting, he listened to his wife, both of them was acting outside of the will of God, both of them was acting outside of biblical, true biblical faith, right? And so therefore, out of flesh, they took on this, you know, they added this other woman to their family construct, right? Okay, when you get to the second part of that fourth verse of chapter 16, it reads this going down to the 16th verse as when he and when she saw that she had conceived. Now, when Hagar saw that she had conceived, her mistress, who would be Sarah, became despised in her eyes. Who was the her? Hagar. So let me let me read this. Again. And when Hagar saw that. Hagar had conceived, Hagar's mistress became despised in Hagar's eyes. So the her here, the pronoun is Hagar. And then Sarah said to Abram, my wrong be upon you. So what people do when they read this part here in this first part or the second part of verse four is they 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 mix up the pronoun. The pronoun is really referring to Hagar, because when you go back to the 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 last, when you go back to the first part, you know it lets you know who this pronoun or who the she is that's being talked about, and that is that Abraham took on Hagar he, as his wife, and he went into her, and she conceived. Now it goes into the second part, and it says, and when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress became despised in her eyes. So again, to be consistent, the pronoun is Hagar. Then Sarah, recognizing that Hagar is now looking at her, with contempt, um, she she feels disrespected, as I'm assuming any woman would feel. Here it is, you gave all that you have to your servant. You elevated your servant in a selfless manner. You, She was a slave one day, and now she becomes a queen the next day, all because of your suggestion. And now she's elevated. She's with child. She's a wife and she's with child, sharing your husband. Then Sarah said to Abraham, my wrong be upon you. I gave my child, I gave my maid into your embrace. And when she saw that she had conceived, I became despised in her eyes. So now this proves it even further that the, the one that was despised is Sarah. Sarah is despised by Hagar. So what's going on here? Um, when a woman conceives, obviously, there are some emotional hormones that takes backflips <laughs> and somersaults, <laughs> you know, inside her emotions and in her mind. And, 
the emotions are fluctuating. They're going all over the place, known as um, pregnancy syndrome. And so she becomes indignant. Um, and uh, as most women do that become pregnant, their hormones are all over the place. And so now, you know, she becomes disrespectful towards her mistress, who is Sarah. And, uh, but instead of respecting her mistress, Sarah, you know, just as many women would do, they become disrespectful to whomever. Uh, when, the, when the hormones kick in, uh, they take control. And to the point that even you would have a, women today who would actually commit murder, <laughs> you know, um, have killed their husbands and have gotten off because what is deemed as temporary insanity due to the, the hormonal effects of, un, of pregnancy syndrome. And so um, you, 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 Hagar is no different. Um, Hagar, friends, um, here it is, is a woman who is a servant one day, and now the next day she's, she's, she's elevated to the status of a, of a queen, of a wife. And now it's conceived um, with a son, with a child. And instead of God looking at the situation that she's in as being so evil and so sinful and so against his will, um, he nevertheless tells her to go back to that and to submit to it. And as I said, you know, it, if this is uh, so how, somehow against the will of God, then why did Jesus himself command that she go back to this polygamous construct, this polygamy, polygamous family makeup? Why command her to go back against something that's against his will? So this is, ex is definitely one example in scripture where God does command polygamy or has commanded it. Um, you know, because many of the critics, um, the detractors, the um, non-believers of the biblical lifestyle of polygamy often charge and often claim that not only is it sinful, that God never commanded even though he allowed it. But this is one example where God actually commanded um, an individual to go back to or be in there or remain in their polygamous situation. And, and so the verse 12 picks up, he says, he, talking to Hagar concerning the child, the son within her, he shall be a wild man. His hand shall be against every man and every man's hand against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. So uh, in other words, uh, he's still going to be a part of the overall larger family and household of Abraham. So don't worry. So I want you to go back and I want you to submit. I want you to continue in this polygamy makeup. You know, uh, why? Because I'm going to bless it. I'm going to make it fruitful to you if you do so. It's basically what the Lord was telling Hagar. He was not telling her that, you know, you are oppressed, what you were, were forced into, um, coerced into, um, is not of me. No, he says the opposite. Verse 13, then she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her. You are the God who sees. For she said, have I also here seen him who sees me? Therefore, the well was called Be'er Laharoi. So she even recognized that this was God talking to her. Observe, it is between Kadesh and Bered. Hagar bore Abram a son, and Abram named his son, whom Hagar bore Ishmael. Abram was 86 years old. So she went back. She's still a part of Abraham's household. She's still a part of the family. Uh, he was 86 years old. All right. 11 years is 11. His son is born 11 years after God first calls him in chapter 12 when Hagar bore Ishmael to Abram. 
Now let's take a look at what this passage tells us. Abram's son born through polygamy was blessed by God and as a legitimate descendant from God promised to him. Although Abraham fathered a child through a second wife who was not the son of promise, Ishmael, his firstborn son, God nevertheless blessed Ishmael as being Abram's seed and within the family and even a part of the brethren that came through Abraham. Now, although Ishmael was not a bastard child, why? Because, you know, uh, uh, unlike what's being taught in Western culture, you know, Hagar was, as we read in scripture, uh, a wife or became a wife to Abraham before that she even conceived. The scriptures went on to say in the earlier parts of this chapter that he took her as his wife or took her to be his wife. There goes our time, there goes our time, there goes our time. Well, as you can see, uh, what we've been told or many of you have been told about Abraham somehow uh, sinning by taking on an additional wife and practicing polygamy, uh, nothing can be further than from the truth. Um, not only did God allow it, but God even commanded uh, Abraham's uh, second wife to go back to their polygamous situation and construct. Uh, and as you can see, God clearly had never at any point tells Abraham that his practice of polygamy, neither does he tell Hagar, his second wife, neither does he tell Sarah, his first wife, that what they're engaged in is not godly or is a sin or against his will or has caused them to step outside of faith in him. Well, with that said, uh, I hope you got something out of this uh, particular episode. Uh, we're going to be back. I believe I may have one more or one or two more videos left in this series. I hope you're enjoying it as I am enjoying uh, sharing this information with you. Um, if you haven't at this point, uh, I downloaded my free ebook on polygamy, um, the scriptural list of, of those who have practiced polygamy. Um, it's a free ebook. Um, do look in the link in the description box down below that I'll be supplying and uh, get your copy. Do share it with a friend. And if you like this video, you like this content, do like it. Um, do subscribe and do uh, hit that notification bell so you can get future content as well as share it with a friend. Don't keep that love to yourself. With that said, I'm signing out for this particular episode of Digging in the Word. This is Mike Allen. You keep digging. God bless. I love you.